this is the busiest cath lab in the whole of the country by the amount of people who go in and out of the cath lab. Angia Suite uh, at the Launceston General Hospital is a very busy place. My name is Rohit Bhattva, I'm a cardiologist and I specialize in interventional cardiology. I work at the Launceston General Hospital and I'm the acting director of the department at the moment. Well, there are two places in Tassie where we have, uh, we can do angiograms and angioplasty. One is in Launceston, one is in Hobart. Uh, we do as many cases as Hobart and we provide service to the whole of the north of the state. A typical day would involve elective cases and then acute emergencies. We do almost 2,000 to 2,500 angiograms every year, including 600 angioplasties. An angiogram basically means uh, injecting dye into your arteries. So injecting contrast dye into your arteries or veins. Uh, if it's into your coronary arteries, we call it a coronary angiogram. And that's what we do. So we inject dye into your coronary arteries to see if you've got a blockage and uh, how can it be treated. In addition, we also do pacemakers and we have pacemaker days, two days a week. It's a very busy lab with an elective and an inpatient list. We know that the north of Tassie and the northwest of Tassie have got the highest rate of cardiovascular disease uh, uh, and, and this is basically given from your parents to you and it's gone out to generations. Uh, uh, apart from the indigenous, we have the highest rate of cardiovascular issues in the whole of the country. So one of them is genes. The second is uh, obviously lifestyle uh, um, and other risk factors including diabetes, hypertension and smoking. The focus should always be on preventative care. Right. So to, to, to have better lifestyle, better diet, more exercise, no smoking. But things as we get older, we, we, we will have events, cardiovascular events. I mean, so put things in a perspective, cardiovascular mortality and morbidity is it's the highest, is number one killer in the community. It tops every other mortality. It tops, um, it far exceeds the numbers if you put all the other uh, reasons for death put together. So it's the number one killer. And these things happen. So the first thing is, is preventative care. And the second thing is to make aware of symptoms of heart disease. So if you, if you believe that something is amiss, if you have chest pain, breathlessness, if you don't quite feel well, and your body tells you to, is to seek medical attention. Ring the ambulance, go to your nearest medical center or come to the hospital. Because early treatment, early treatment is, is key. So early diagnosis and treatment is key to, to uh, good outcomes. People are surprised when they have a heart attack as to how quickly it happens. So suddenly one minute you're, you're fine and the second minute things are not good. Uh, we have uh, out of the 600 angioplasties that we do, around one quarter of them are acute heart attacks. These are blocked arteries. So if you have a blocked arteries, things will change pretty quickly. So you ring the ambulance and or you come to the hospital. So the important thing is to seek medical help. You see it ever so often, uh, young men and women coming in with heart attacks and they don't believe that they're having heart attacks. It's almost like this cannot be happening to me. You know, I've never smoked, I've lived uh, a, a very healthy life. How could I be having a heart attack? So it's always like it, it happens to someone else and not to me. So when they come in, there's a sense of disbelief and, and, and surprise as to, as to uh, why is this happening to me? If you feel that there's something wrong, don't, don't be ashamed to ring the ambulance, seek medical help, go to your GP or come to the hospital. We have one of the best trained staff. We provide 24 seven coverage. We've come so far in the last 30 years 30 to 40 years, uh, uh, you can only imagine that angioplasty, uh, uh, we only started doing coronary angioplasty since the 1970s and 80s. Uh, and, and now it's becoming the norm, it's a standard of care reported to people. Now, uh, apart from coronary angioplasty, we have also are blessed with so many technological and pharmaceutical advances in cardiology, including uh, drugs that are available, which can be given. To, to, to treat a heart attack. And then we have better transport facilities, taking people over to a center where they can have a blocked artery treated. So 40 years ago, there was two drugs, and now we have a 
plethora of drugs, so many other therapeutic options, and we've come such a long way in the last 30, 40 years. In fact, I, I would say this whole, it's such a rapidly evolving field that the paradigm of treatment for cardiovascular disease will again go into a new avatar and, and, and change over the last 20, 30 years. I think it's so exciting the amount of work being done, and that has been done the last few years.